All right, thank you for joining us today. My name is Jim Chandler. I'm the Assistant City Administrator and Director of Community and Economic Development with the City of Hyattsville. As the City's Economic Development Director, my focus is to facilitate and shape investment in the community, ensuring that it's reflective of the City's vision values. This week, we're celebrating economic development's vital role in shaping communities throughout the state of Maryland. From October 19th through 23rd, economic development will take center stage in counties, cities, and towns throughout the state of Maryland. And we'd like to recognize the dedicated work of economic developers as the primary focus of this effort. Uh, this week is designed to increase an understanding of economic development's contributions to the state's business climate, job retention, and growth. Today, the city is hosting our Economic Development Week developer profile. And with us today is Bobby Gilbane, a vice president at the Gilbane Development Company, here to talk about their exciting project, the Riverfront at West Hyattsville. Mr. Gilbane, welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jim. It's a pleasure to uh, uh, be working with you uh, on this economic development profile of the project. Terrific. Um, if you could, uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, Gilbane Companies. Sure, absolutely. Um, so Gilbane is a uh, family-owned uh, business uh, that's going on its uh, fifth generation of uh, family ownership and leadership. It was founded in 1870 in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, got its start in the construction business, uh, doing single-family homes, uh, and oh, through successive generations. Uh, we've grown the platform um, uh, to an international company uh, that, that works not only in construction, um, but also real estate development. Uh, I am based uh, in our DC office. I made the move down to uh, the region in 2013. And um, my focus uh, primarily has been on uh, TOD, transit-oriented developments uh, within the DC metro area. Um, I've been working on uh, the Riverfront at West Hydesville project, uh, which was up until recently uh, 18 and a half acres of uh, MXT zoned uh, land directly adjacent to the West Hydesville Metro. Uh, we've subsequently added an additional five acres um, uh, through an acquisition of uh, Wamata parcel um, a few weeks ago and uh, have worked to bring the site uh, up out of the floodplain. Um, and to entitle a site that currently has uh, 183 townhomes, um, which are actually uh, moving forward with construction very soon. And I believe uh, townhomes should start uh, construction uh, this year, sales to follow. Um, additionally, we have the Kaiser Permanente Medical Office Building, um, which we're very excited about. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that today. And that's a 49,000 square foot building um, that's going to start construction this upcoming January. Uh, and additionally, we have uh, two phases of multifamily uh, buildings, um, totaling 500 plus units uh, with um, roughly 10,000 square feet of ground floor retail. Um, we're also doing a variety of open space uh, amenities um, as part of our compensatory floodplain storage project. Uh, we built a four and a half acre uh, park um, just adjacent to our site. And uh, you know, we're very excited about the project to date and um, um, the perspective or potential for uh, future development in and around the area moving forward. That's terrific. And, and I think very helpful for folks to get an understanding of, of what the project really encompasses. Um, if, you, if you could, you know, taking into uh, consideration some of the existing site challenges and, and market conditions, what opportunities and challenges have you faced in developing the Riverfront project? Sure. So I, I think that the biggest issue that we faced, and um, it's not specific really to this project as it impacts projects throughout the county, uh, was the 100-year floodplain and stormwater management. Um, that's a major issue uh, throughout the country, um, but it's really highlighted in uh, the West Hyattsville area um, because of the existing flooding and, and stormwater issues. So uh, coming up with a working, a workable plan, a feasible plan uh, to get the site out of the 100-year floodplain um, was, was a tall order. And so we had to work collaboratively with uh, you know, really all, sh all shareholders um, and find a, a, an execution that would work and not just for the benefit of the project, but benefit of the community. Um, and so we were able to 
negotiate uh, some agreements with Parks and Rec to utilize an adjacent site that they controlled um, to use as a compensatory floodplain storage, but also improve it, right? So um, along with that work, we're creating the four and a half acre uh, park parcel um, with passive recreation uh, opportunities. Uh, and then we upgraded um, the trail system. So, you know, the pedestrian and bicycle connectivity was hugely important um, to the project as well as the community. And so um, we upgraded the trail and, and provided a host of other improvements such as lighting uh, to help with safety issues. Um, so the environmental issues was, was, a, was a huge uh, constraint and it really took us several years to not only get all those agreements in place, but then to do the compensatory storage work. Um, you know, again, this project really was conceived in 2015 so we've been working on it for over five years. Um, there were some additional issues, just coordination with WMATA. Um, although they're very, very interested in seeing adjacent construction, um, it comes with its own set of challenges and just requirements. So working through that uh, took a lot of time um, just to get to an understanding of what was and wasn't feasible. Uh, and then market conditions have changed fairly dramatically. Um, when we first started the project, um, I'd say the emphasis on townhomes wasn't nearly as much there, and, and we've seen just a huge price increase uh, as housing. Um, there's just, you know, an ongoing shortage of uh, for sale homes. I think COVID, what's been interesting is you've, you've seen an even bigger need uh, that people have uh, for uh, home ownership. Um, and then on the apartments front, um, just rents, right? So um, there's obviously the need for quality housing across the income spectrum. Um, but how do you make that feasible um, given the where the rents are and, and just given the, the huge costs associated, associated with site work and floodplain? So there's certainly been an increase uh, or say a positive increase in uh, market fundamentals despite COVID, um, although that continues to have an impact. Um, but a, a lot of things just had to come together in order for this project to make sense. Um, and thankfully it has, and, and we've been able to move forward. Um, you know, getting Kaiser uh, to the project was is certainly very, very attractive for a variety of reasons, but that's not something you necessarily plan for. I think half of what we've done um, was we had a very solid plan, um, but also we were able to move forward um, to capture potential opportunities as they made themselves available. If you, if you're, you know, always waiting around for something to come to you um, instead of creating the opportunity and then capturing it, um, you're going to be waiting uh, quite some time for something to happen. That's that is terrific. Uh, in, in, if you could uh, just to, to tease out the, the Kaiser um, mm -hmm. you know, opportunity, how do you see institutional uses like Kaiser uh, anchoring transit oriented development projects? Yeah, so Kaiser is a is a great example of a, a you know world class institution um, that's already has a a large footprint throughout the mid Atlantic with very large plans to expand upon that footprint um, over the next three to five years. Uh, they were already at a smaller site at uh, the mall, um, and you know when they approached us, we were a little um, I'd say hesitant at first because we had some plans to do some multifamily on the site. Uh, that they now own, um, but when they walked us through their vision for this medical office building, as you can see up on the screen right now, it's definitely not the medical office buildings of old. I mean, it's a it's a beautiful building, uh, a lot of metal, glass, and um, it's a it's a really a great activator. We see it as a huge catalyst. So get, having an institution, and I'd say non GSA um, institution is incredibly important because Kaiser was willing to not only take that, that big move and invest a lot of money, um, not only purchasing the land, but also the construction of the building, which is, uh, which is beautiful. Um, but they also have, I think uh, they're expecting 27,000 visitors at this facility annually, um, uh, which is a large number. So you really increase that foot traffic. Uh, and they also have a host of other benefits that they provide. So, um, you know, looking to activate their space with farmer markets on the weekends, really embed themselves within the community. They really are an outward uh, facing institution. And what you often see with, you know, same with government tenants is they're inward facing, right? They put up walls, barriers, they have their own set of security requirements. And so while certain institutions like GSA may make sense from a user perspective, they don't necessarily help to catalyze a lot of additional 
development and connectivity, whereas Kaiser um, is really planting the flag. They, they want to stay within the Hyattsville community to serve their membership in the community at large, and they, they play nice with others, right? So we have a, a host of other uses, such as townhomes, uh, apartments, open spaces, retail, uh, when you really get that nice mix of uses that, that um, interacts well with each other, um, you really start to get something powerful. And so for them to make the investment um, and to have a building or to be proposed a building that looks as nice as it does, uh, I think it really sets a new bar uh, for development and expectations. Because when the outside world sees something like this going up, they take notice. Um, they want to know what else is going on in, in Hyattsville, West Hyattsville. What are the opportunities? So I think it also serves as a beacon to the private sector uh, to make them aware of opportunities that they may have overlooked up until now. That's terrific. And certainly I agree. Beautiful building right there fronting Eger Road. It looks really terrific. And uh, thank you for the explanation of, of how you see this building um, interacting with the residential neighborhood uh, right at, at Metro's mm -hmm. doorstep. Uh, if you could, uh, could you tell us a little bit about when our residents should expect to see uh, both the residential uh, units and uh, Kaiser Permanente facility be up and running? Sure. So the Kaiser facility um, is anticipated to commence construction uh, in January of 2021, and it should deliver in June of 2023 um, and open for operations uh, by August of 2023. Um, so they'll be moving uh, their employees uh, into that new building and, and getting training up and running uh, so that membership will be able to start using the facility. The uh, residential component, um, at least on the townhouse side, is going to be moving forward much sooner than that. Um, Stanley Martin uh, is the uh, builder of those townhomes, and uh, they are commencing construction on the first 54 townhomes, which are towards the front of the development. Um, I believe that construction is supposed to start uh, either by the end of this year or uh, January of 2021, um, and uh, we'll we'll. The, the build out of that uh, is anticipated to take uh, a few years. They they have more than just the first 54 units, but that was in the their um, first phase of construction. Um, and then the multifamily, uh, which we have uh, a couple of parcels. Uh, again, we're proposing two phases of multifamily, and we are going to be moving forward um, with the entitlements for those uh, this upcoming year and looking to um, probably start construction of the first phase the multifamily in 2020, uh, let me see, 2022, Q1 2022, with the delivery of Q1 2024. Terrific. Um, my last question is, is uh, sort of a big picture question. Uh, from a developer's perspective, what development in market trends do you see occurring in the next 10 years, both within Hyattsville, uh, but certainly the broader Prince George's County uh, and metropolitan area? Sure. Well, I, I think opportunities for large-scale developments like the Riverfront West Hyattsville are, are few and far between, um, just, just simply by the nature of either assembling a land, uh, parcels of that size, takes a while and it's very expensive. Um, that said, I still think you're seeing some trends occurring at, um, it, within our development that are indicative of larger trends. Uh, the housing need is, is absolutely critical. That's not going away anytime soon. And again, it's housing needs across the entire income spectrum, affordable, you know, more workforce, uh, market rate, uh, and then both rental and fee simple. Um, and so how do you uh, create housing opportunities for, you know, either existing residents, future residents, um, because housing does uh, serve really as a, an attractive beacon towards the private sector, right? So if you have companies that are looking to relocate to a given area, um, you know, are their employees going to be happy in this new location? You know, that employee retention and satisfaction is a huge component of what goes into site selection for major corporations. Um, so we're going to see that need just expand. Uh, and that gets more and more difficult to, to fill that need. Um, we're also seeing some big changes in terms of office users. Um, you know, I think you're you're moving away from your typical, you know, office users where they may want, want 10 to 20,000 square feet within a 100,000 square foot building. And there's a, a big focus on healthcare and life science, which is 
really a phenomenal opportunity when you can when you also look at what's going on at UMD um, with technology, cybersecurity, um, things along those lines. These are the technologies and, and economies of tomorrow. And I think Prince George's County, uh, and Hyattsville in particular, is really well positioned to take advantage of that. So, you know, you see Kaiser Permanente making a, a big splash at the riverfront at West Hyattsville. Um, other you know, large-scale healthcare providers are looking at doing the exact same thing. I mean, it's basically a Cold War arms race right now to to get new sites, to get new facilities, to serve this expanding population in the area. And so, you know, a focus on healthcare and life science hubs is becoming more and more prevalent. Um, COVID really helped to accelerate uh, that drive and that need. And and it's it's no secret that the Washington D.C. area is it's number four in the country in terms of life science and healthcare. So I think there's an, a, a really great opportunity to double down on that. Same with cybersecurity. Again, if you can create opportunities for those companies of, you know, economies of tomorrow to grow, um, you really can create a nice mousetrap and, and set a great growth pattern for the future. Uh, I think you're also seeing a, a larger focus on health and wellness, uh, the overall attractiveness of a community, right? So instead of just doing one-off projects, you know, what's, what's the full amenities? What, what's, the, what's it like to live and, and be in an area? And I think Hyattsville has done an incredible job over the years to, you know, through the people that live there and the businesses that operate there to create a fantastic environment and sense of place. And that's one of the things that, are, that brought us to Prince George's County and brought us to the West Hyattsville site is it, there's, a, there's something that can't be replicated, right? It, it's organic and um, people really like living in Hyattsville. There's, there's a great sense of community. And so we're trying to expand upon that in a very organic way. So I think organic growth, organic types of development, the focus on higher, uh, um, you know, I'd say the economies of tomorrow, healthcare, life science, and, and cybersecurity um, seem to be just a, a big focus. And it's something that we're really trying to embrace as a company, uh, not just in Hyattsville, but throughout the DC region as well. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, really appreciate uh, hearing your perspective uh, I'm hopeful that this uh, does help our residents better understand how a project uh, like Riverfront at, at West Hyattsville really starts to take shape in the decisions that go into, uh, it, it, you know, the development uh, decisions and, and uh, how uh, ultimately the project comes to be. And, and uh, certainly uh, appreciative of, you know, your views of both Hyattsville and Prince George's County in, in the perspective of the private sector. Well, I, I am very appreciative for your time uh, here today uh, with our developer spotlight discussing this marquee project here in West Hyattsville. Uh, on behalf of the city of Hyattsville, I'd like to again extend our appreciation to the Gilbane companies for your investment in the community. And we look forward to the completion of the Riverfront at West Hyattsville project. Uh, well, that does- Absolutely. Doesn't... Oh, you... No, I just I just wanted to to thank you again. It's been um, we've been working together on uh, on this project uh, for quite some time, um, and I'd love to thank the the residents of, of Hyattsville as well. Um, our project got some fantastic input very early on, some very meaningful feedback. Um, the community process is incredibly important. Having um, you know of your voice heard is incredibly important, and. Uh, great projects don't happen in a vacuum. Um, and so having that sort of feedback and support has really helped drive this project forward. And we look forward to additional community input and support as we move forward on our uh, multifamily entitlements. So uh, thank you and thanks to everyone who may be watching. All right, Mr. Gilwain, thank you very much. Uh, that does conclude our developer profile. Uh, please join us as we continue to celebrate Economic Development Week uh, throughout the city of Hyattsville and the state of Maryland. And thank you again for watching. Thank you.